what have I just seen today? Nah, nah, you guys, I've suffered enough this afternoon. I'm not gonna suffer out here in the cold. Let me get my coat on, yeah? Now, that's better now. Um, what the hell did I see this afternoon? Honestly, looking at that final scoreline, you guys, it still hasn't registered. It hasn't computed at all. 5-2 at this stage of the season where we got West Ham and Spurs breathing down our necks. To concede five goals against West Brom, we haven't scored near close to this amount of goals in any game this season. It's L's all around, from the players all the way to the manager too. Um, for me, by far, easily one of Tuchel's worst performances. None of the decisions made any sense today. All the decisions put us on the back foot too. And I was seeing these issues straight with the lineup as well, you guys. Um, I've had this one fear, yeah? I'm hoping it's not going to become reality. But you guys know me. I like to think about the future. But the one fear I have is, is our lack of creating goals. Is our lack of scoring goals going to potentially cost us a top four spot? I mean, on paper, this should be the best period for us. You know, we're playing against many teams in the bottom half of the table right now. However, these are teams that will happily defend deep. These are teams that will park the bus. And as we're seeing, you guys, our patterns of playing when it comes to breaking teams down, it really isn't improving like that. Yeah, when it comes to going toe v toe against the big boys, we're about it, we can do it, we can play that football. But when the game becomes different, ah, nah, you guys, I'm, like I'm saying, I'm praying that this won't be our downfall. Because today against West Brom, they absolutely humbled us. Oh, with reviews like this, where do I start with the negativity? You guys know I'm not about my negativity, but today, this is fully deserved. Um, I look at the lineup, of course, no Tammy Abraham in the team. And I know some people, in, your, in their opinions, might feel like Tammy would have made no difference. But I'm sorry today, Tammy would have been the perfect striker to be leading the line against West Brom. You would have had more uh, options to play the ball to him. You could have played the ball long. You could have run over the top. You could be pressing, chasing down his man more. You know, with Werner, today... I sympathise a bit because one thing we're constantly seeing is the lack of the four parts that he doesn't get. The quality of passes, the service was not there today. I saw cover, even though he put in industry, you know, he was calling for the ball, he was trying to make things happen in the field. I can't discredit that effort. But at the same time, I can also critique some of the poor aspects of his game, which were definitely the final balls. I mean, the four passes were constantly getting over hit, over hit, over hit. Of course, I can't be too mad because for some reason he was the only guy in the team in those areas and those opportunities to play the forward pass. But it meant that Werner lacked without service today. I'm sorry, you know, it does feel like we need a striker sometimes that can provide a bit more for the team because we can't play this perfect style of football when it comes to creating chances for our forwards. So it felt like at times he wasn't really doing too much with this game too. The one thing that most definitely killed us in the end, which absolutely ruined our chances, was that big red card. Now, you know, I feel like before I can even discuss that, I need to discuss a player that was absolutely mid today. And you know what? I'm going to keep things respectful. I'm angry. I'm very angry, very upset by the defeat. But, you know, with what I'm seeing on social media these days, you guys, I feel like, you know, I need to do my part and critique in a mild manner. I'm sorry. I, I need to start being better than that. And today... I can sympathise with Jorginho coming back. He might be a bit rusty, you know? He's had injuries recently. However, I feel it's safe to say that this was his worst performance under Tuchel by an absolute mile. The thing that was really standing out even more was the passes over the top. The passes off the ground. He couldn't do it. He can't do it. Is that been insulting? I don't know. I just don't think he can do it. You know, constantly hitting balls, you know, off the pitch, off the field, non-stop. Like, ugh. It makes it harder for the team to be able to build up and play. But, you know, in the first half, his error cost Thiago Silva, forced him to pick up a set, uh, his first yellow card. And of course, in the end, you know, Silva gets a second yellow. It was unlucky, in my opinion, in the context of things. But, you know, what? after seeing it time and time again, this was a fair second yellow card. Was the referee consistent with how he applied the laws? Of course not. You know, they never are. They never really are. But... I think now that I've got this stuff out of the way, I can focus on maybe my biggest critique for the day, of the day I mean, and that is definitely Thomas Tuchel. Now I'll tell you guys this, yeah? I remember Conte's second season, first game of that new season, we played 
at home against Burnley. Now, I remember this game clearly because I was at that game. It was a game where Borger got his first chance. You guys know that I love my Jeremy Borger. I was absolutely gassed in that game. And of course, everything just tumbled down. Cahill getting sent off. 50 minutes in, meaning that Borger had to come off. And this was a game where Mitchie Batshuayi was starting up front. Now, what sub did Conte make? He brought on Christensen in the time we were down 10 men to maintain a back three system. Of course, no surprise, we lost that game. 3-2 in the end. However, in that game, it was a much more valiant effort to try and get back in that game. Today, we saw Deja Vu repeating itself and I'm sorry, this was absolute nonsense to be playing a back three against 19th place West Brom. All you are doing against a team that is already losing 1-0 down. We have nothing to lose. They're already down the table. You told them, okay, we've got a fighting chance, lads. That's what you told them. Of course, 10 men were already short enough in attack using this formation. We were down another attacking player taking off Z. Who do West Ham have to worry about? Who was the attacking threat that West Ham had to worry about? Of course, Werner was never going to get found at all throughout this game today. No surprise. And then what happens in the end? They had the confidence to push forward, to push up. Two quick fire goals right before the first half ended. I mean, incredible goals by Pereira is an absolute baller. He'll definitely move on. Some team has to sign him up, he's too good. But this is what I mean already because of that sub. Maintaining a back three sub. When we don't even have like the right forward players that could be doing anything, uh, you know, with the ball by themselves. In isolated moments. It wasn't going to happen. I don't understand it. I do not understand it. We, all we had to do was maintain a back four. I mean, we had the defenders on the fields. You know, we could have kept that same defence, that same midfield. You know, continued that same intensity. You know, maintain possession of the ball. You know, try and stifle West Brom's game. You know, try and kill the momentum. We did not do that whatsoever. And of course, when you're 2-1 down, you know, 10 men were trying to flood men forwards. Uh, second half, he takes off Pulisic for Mason Mount. I'm just thinking, in that second half, Pulisic would have absolutely shined, you know? We needed that 1v1 threat in the game. And again, took off another attacking player to maintain a back three setup. And what really annoyed me is that it didn't take until like, what, the 77th minute? 78th minute for him to move back to a back four? I'm thinking, come on, Tuchel. Come on, like, I understand why we're using this current setup and system. I fully understand it, I fully get it, but, you know, this pragmatism every single time it, it doesn't work you know we're not a free scoring free flowing team right now you know we, we're not a team that's got three goals under him just yet we're still struggling to find our identity in attack we're seeing so much rotation in that area and as i've been stressing and i've been saying consistently i fully get the context i've been saying it since day one after i saw that wolves game it told me exactly what i needed to know about uh, the more of it this season you know what i mean it was all about uh, you know, being a strong team defensively that's going to, you know, nullify our opponents and try and just to win games 1-2-0 when we can. And it's worked for us very well. It will continue to work for us very well. I'm criticising you guys. This ain't me saying, oh, Tuchel's not good enough now. Here's proof. Any of you guys who are typing any of this stuff in, please just delete your comments right now. But on a real, this was an opportunity for there to be more bravery in the team today. We could have easily maintained our momentum against a 10-man West Brom if we have the attacking players there and the options in the field. Once you take them away, we were just allowing West Brom to, you know, utilise the X-man against us time and time again to create a very embarrassing defeat. A very embarrassing defeat, 5-2. Didn't have to be like that. It really did not have to be like that whatsoever. Just needed our manager to show a bit more faith and show a bit more bravery, in my opinion. Um... You know, to lose a game against a 19th place opposition. Especially when we've got these teams breathing down our necks, you guys. You know, it feels like that pressure to secure a top four sport is, is back. For some reason, it's, we haven't been feeling that pressure because our form, our momentum has been so ridiculous these past few months. But the reality is, we've got West Ham two points behind us. We've got Spurs three points behind us. I mean, once, once they get their wins today, that's us fighting to get back into a top four sport. The games are starting to run out, eight games left. And of course, we've got some difficult games coming up near the end of the season. Leicester, Man City, Arsenal. You know, this was the month we couldn't afford screw-ups. We had to get the results against these bottom half teams. And if we are to do that, we're going to have to see Tuchel trying to focus more on the attack now. 
We have to see it. We have to see him using a, a, a 4 3 3 at times. You know, not every game has to be back three setup, back three setup. I think as we saw in this game, you know, our, our chance creation is so limited. You know, I'm seeing Marcus Alonso. He's our only aerial threat in the books because our striker, our number nine, doesn't have that in him, which is understandable. But then that's limiting how we can create opportunities then, isn't it? You know, when Alonso is having a more prominent threat than your actual striker, for me, it tells you that there needs to be more work done on the drawing board. And I think a solution right now is to stop forcing maybe Werner constantly in the team. I feel like the team might even get the best out of him, to be honest. I think Tammy Abraham, this team does very well with the nine. We've seen that with Tammy. We've seen that with Kai Havertz too. It feels like we've got to get back to that, man. Um, yeah, yeah, this is an ab absolute shambles. Shambolic performance today. Going down to 10 men is still not an excuse for any of the nonsense we saw today. I mean, we've been down 10 men plenty of times. We've been down 9 men and we had more fight and more resolve. So, uh, honestly, you guys, the stress does not end. It only continues. Again, CFC Porto now. Let's hope that we can get our form back. But for me, you know, two call the line up to. We knew that guys were coming back from internationals tired. We knew that guys were coming back to the team injured. Why are you not using your Gilmores? You know, why aren't you using guys that was, you know, at Cobham the entire time? It doesn't make any sense. And again, you know, let's not favour experience over anything when we have amazing quality throughout the squad. So you guys, of course, I'm very uh, passionate. I'm very annoyed. I'm very frustrated. Uh, I was not expecting this today. And, uh, of course, you know, I'm going to ask you, is there any point me doing a player ratings? Actually, not for consistency, I'm going to do that. Ignore what I'm saying, you guys. I'm still pissed off after this defeat. Wow, it doesn't make no sense. It don't make no sense. But anyway, I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving. I'll catch you guys later with the player ratings video. Peace. For fuck's sake.